Hey everybody, Chell here with Prismatic Powders. Today we're going to talk about why vacuums suck for two-stage and multi-stage powder coating. Now wiping, masking, and vacuuming are all viable options for keeping powder off of or out of certain areas when multi-stage powder coating. And there are pros and cons to all of them, but vacuums and vacuum attachments are a really popular tool for multi-stage projects. But are they better? Now if you enjoy our videos, please like and subscribe. We're committed to churning out helpful, relevant content for you. Now in this video we're going to show you two identical wheels that need some color therapy. Each wheel is a two-stage job, and we're gonna feature a couple of our new colors that we're really excited to show off. Now, we're gonna be doing the typical masking and, and wiping on one wheel, and for the other, we're gonna use the vacuum for as much of the job as possible, and then we're gonna share our thoughts. Now, masking has always been the tried and true stalwart method for two-toning, but it dates back several thousand years may or may not be true. So the masking process is not often complicated, but it can easily become time consuming depending on the areas that you have to mask. Here is a the first wheel that we have for two toning and we're using blackboard for our first color. And then we're gonna be using a brand new color, which is Danio Green. Now Danio Green is a bright green with silver metallic flake. It isn't Irish. This color is also black light reactive, so stay tuned. We'll show you that a little bit later in the video. Now, depending on your color combinations, you may or may not have to mask for the first step. Sometimes you can just base coat the entire project. In our case, we're going to mask the wheel and then wheel lay down the first color, which as I mentioned before, is going to be blackboard. This is high temp tape and it comes in a variety of widths. So you've got options to best suit the areas that you need to mask off. For your sake, we've already started to mask this wheel. It's mostly done. So we're just going to finish it up here and then we'll move on to the coating. Oftentimes with masking, you need to be extra careful to make precise lines. So make sure you're always using a nice sharp blade when you cut and trim the tape. After we spray out the blackboard, we're going to flash it, then we'll pull it out and let it cool before we apply the Danio Green. Peel the tape while the parts are still hot. We like to do this part at flow out. Okay, so we've got our blackboard on and now it's time to put on our Danio Green, which is gonna go on the face of this wheel here. Uh, Danio Green is a metallic, so we highly recommend the use of a fluidizer and this is gonna keep the metallic from settling to the bottom so that when you spray it, it'll ensure that it goes on in nice uniform distribution. Rather than masking off the recessed areas on this wheel, we figured it was going to be easier and quicker to just wipe down the areas of overspray.
Now let's talk vacuuming. Does it suck? Here's our other wheel, but on this one, we're gonna be inverting the color scheme. So this one should be a little more challenging to vacuum than just getting the uh, face. So the face of this wheel is going to be the blackboard color. And then on the recessed areas in here, here, and by the lug nuts, it's gonna be another new color, which is Holy Snapper. And Holy Snapper is a bright orange with big silver metallic flakes. And it too is black light reactive. Even though the vacuum is pretty thorough at removing most of the powder, you're still going to have to wipe some surfaces to make sure you get everything off. We're going to be pulling the wheel at flow out and then we'll let it cool. After that, we add the holy snapper. Now that we have the holy snapper on, it's time to vacuum the face. Through this process, we had to be careful with the tubing for the attachments. You need to keep track of that tubing so it doesn't rub against your parts. Check it out. Okay, so the final thoughts on vacuuming. It's a fairly quick process for removing powder. Uh, there are a variety of attachments to assist you, ranging from fine detail work to removing larger swaths of powder at a time. And another benefit of using the vacuum is that it removes powder immediately and gets it out of the way as you go, so you don't have to be as concerned with the powder dropping on the surfaces below like you would if you were wiping the parts. Vacuuming does require a steady hand to keep your lines precise and to make sure you're not removing powder from the surfaces that you want to keep the powder on. So you have to be careful because it can be pretty easy to get outside the lines if you move too quickly. The bottom line is, yes, vacuuming does indeed suck, but in a good way. And we really like the process. It's not a replacement for masking or wiping, but it is another method that you can use in conjunction with the others that can really make your life a lot easier when you've got a multi-stage job. It's another tool to have in your toolbox. So let's address the elephant in the room concerning vacuums. And that is the risk of explosion. There's been a lot of talk within powder coating circles about this, and the gist of it is, that if you don't have an explosion-proof vacuum that is specifically designed for dry powder, that there is a risk of explosion. And this is true. Powder coating, like most fine powders and dusts, carries the risk of explosion if it's ignited. Even powdered non-dairy creamer can ignite and flame up. So it's certainly something to be aware of, and you should have a plan in place for these hazards. Uh, simply put, a vacuum can be an ignition source. So just like many other things in the process, you need to assess your situation and equipment and have a plan in place. And that's gonna be a wrap for today's video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.